Hey guys, what's up? So today I want to solve with you a pretty cool problem in calculus that basically goes, uh, we need to prove that this equation is true, okay? It's that simple. But the only thing that, well, it might not be that simple, is that we need to, uh, in order to prove this equation, probably the best way would be to show that this limit equals this number over here, okay? So if we want to prove this equation, we just need to show step by step that this limit is indeed equal to this number over here, okay? And that is, well, we need to compute that limit. So let's do that. Now I'm going to use a pretty cool technique that basically goes, I'm going to find the, well, I'm going to basically rewrite that limit as the derivative of natural log. And well, then we're going to be able to uh, do some calculations from there. And we're going to see if this is true, okay? That is the main, like the outline of the method that I'm going to use so that, well, you have a bit of context of what I, where, where I'm trying to get to. And that's it, okay? So now let's begin. So I'm going to define this limit first to be a variable so that we can play with that variable. Instead of writing the entire limit, well, we can write the variable. And I'm going to say that y is equal to, well, the limit, the, uh, the limit as n approaches infinity for 1 plus k over wn to the a times n, okay? Now, this is going to be our variable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log on both sides of this equation, okay? And we're going to have that ln y equals the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus k over wn to the a n, okay? Now, you might be wondering, well, why am I, can I write ln inside the limit? Uh, yes, there is a property that allows you to say that the limit of the log equals the log of the limit, okay? There is a, pro there, there is a property that allows you to write, when you have ln of the limit, well, that is going to be the same as if you took the limit of the natural log or any log that you have, and basically, that property allows us to do this, okay? So this is true. This is something that you can do, okay? So now, there is, an, there is also another property of logarithms that allows us to move this an to the front of ln, okay? We can multiply ln by an. And we're going to have that this equals uh, the limit as n. Why did I make this l so big? Yeah, let me do that again. I want to keep a consistent, uh, you know, like font size. I don't want to make something too big and then everything else small, so... Uh, let me do that again. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. For a n, uh, we multiply by ln. So we have a n times natural log of 1 plus k over w n. Okay? Now we have this expression over here. And what I want to do now is I want to introduce a new variable into the problem that is going to allow us to see the derivative of ln in a more compact way, okay? In a more evident way. So I'm going to let... Uh, delta x be equal to n. Okay, so we have ln. And remember, this is the function that we want to turn, that we want to take the derivative of. So we have an x point, a, a base point, I'm sorry, or you can you could also call it an x point. Our base point is going to be 1, okay? And the variable or the additional number that we want to make close, that we want to make uh, very close to 0 is going to be k over wn, okay? So if we want to write this function as a derivative, or we want to take its derivative, well, we need to say that kwn is going to be the number that approaches zero, okay? And well, we can usually, uh, usually the notation that you use is delta x for that number. So we're going to say that delta x equals uh, k over wn. And that would also mean that uh, n equals, so we can move that to this side, and then you get that n equals k over uh, w delta x, okay? So now these are the two expressions that we get. Let me erase this. <laughs> so now these are the two expressions that we get based on this new variable, delta x. And now what I want to do is I want to introduce these two equations into the limit, okay? So I'm going to continue up here. So let's say I continue here. So now we know that this would be the limit as n approaches infinity for, now a times n, we know how much n is. So we have a k over uh, w delta x times the natural log of 1 plus delta x. And what I'm going to do now is this. So I'm going to open a parenthesis here. I'm going to close this one. And now I'm going to subtract ln1 from this uh, natural log, OK? Now, why did I write this ln1? Well, if we want to get the derivative, remember, we have a base point of x equals 1 here. And to get the derivative, we need to subtract from this expression the base point or the function evaluated at that base point. Now, the function is ln, 
and the base point is one. So we need to subtract the we need to subtract from this ln one, okay? And well, we're pretty lucky that ln one equals zero, okay? So when we write this new term, well, we're not really changing anything from the original limit, okay? So you can actually write this and you're okay. You're, you didn't change the problem. So now there is one thing that we're missing and it's, you can see that this function is in terms of delta x, but our limit is in terms of uh, n, okay? We're saying that the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression. Now we want to change this limit in, we want to put this notation or we want to stop using n and use delta x instead. So what you can do in this case is, well, you know delta x is a function of n. So if you want to you wanna know what happens as n approaches infinity, well, you can see in this equation what happens as n approaches infinity, delta x approaches zero, okay? You can see from here, you can take the limit as n approaches infinity, delta x will approach zero. So you can write this thing as uh, the limit as delta x approaches zero for, and I'm actually gonna, so you see it, so, so you see the next step right now, since you have a, k, and w, remember those are gonna be coefficients, so you can take them outside the limit and you can write it like this, so you have a times k over w times, now the limit as delta x approaches zero for this function over here times uh, one over delta x. And you know that if you have one over delta x times these two, these two terms, you can move delta x as a denominator for both of them. So now you have ln 1 plus delta x minus ln 1, and all of this over delta x, okay? And now I believe that it is pretty easy to see that this is the derivative of natural log evaluated at x equals 1. And this is just going to be a coefficient that you have. Whatever a k over w is, well, that is just going to be a coefficient. So now you can simplify this as uh, a k over w times the derivative of ln x evaluated at x equals 1, okay? And you know this is going to be equal to a k over w times the derivative of ln, of ln x equals 1 over x, and you want to evaluate that at x equals 1, okay? Now you have this, and it's pretty easy to see that this would be equal to a k over w, okay? This is how much we get for, well, uh, for not y, I'm sorry, you need to remember that we got all this chain of expressions, uh, we got all this chain of expressions from l and y, okay? So now this is gonna be the value for l and y. So I'm gonna write it over here so you know, l and y. And now if we wanna see if this limit actually equals this number, well, now we need to solve for y, okay? And see if, if y equals this number. Because remember, if we solve for y, well, we just solve for this limit, okay? y represents our limit. So how can we solve for y? Well, remember, you can use base e, so you have e to the ln y is going to be equal to e to the a k over w, okay? So now, remember, e and ln, they cancel out. That is a property of logarithms. If you don't know, if you don't know it, don't worry about it. But just understand that e and ln, they cancel out. And you get y equals e to the a k over w. And you know that this would be the same as e to the 1 over w. That is going to be the w root of e. And a k, it would just simply be a number, an exponent. So you have a times k as the exponent for e, okay, as the power. And now, well, you can see that indeed y equals this number over here. And that is what we wanted to see. We wanted to prove if this equation is true, and we just did that by solving this limit over there. And indeed, uh, seeing that, well, we get to this number, okay, which is what we were claiming that this limit equals, okay? So that is the entire problem. I hope that you enjoyed this video, you learned something. Um, this technique of using delta x and then, uh, you know, getting the derivative of any function, it is a pretty power powerful technique. Uh, that I hope that, well, you maybe you just learned it today, or maybe you just, you know, you just reinforced something that you learned about this technique before solving this problem. So yeah, I hope that this video has been helpful in any way possible, okay? So well, I hope to see you in the following video. Don't forget to subscribe and bye.